Michigan State AD Bill Beaker is stepping down as of, well, he's he's going to remain in an interim role while they're doing a national search. Uh, this is the same role that he was in beforehand. Before hired, with, right? Yeah, he was yeah. an interim before that. And at the time, the president then said, we are not going to go with anybody that's in-house. We're going to do a national search and da-da-da-da. And then, of course, you remember all the Larry Nasser stuff happened and the D'Antonio stuff, and there was uh, just a lot going on around that program. And they said, hey, you know what? Izzo had some issues. A lot of stuff happened there. Beekman's doing a really good job. We'll just keep him in this role. And then you ended up having to make a head football coach hire with him. So he brings in Mel Tucker. And I I think I want to say overpays, but – the amount of money that they were bringing in, it's really not, you know, you just got to pay what you got to pay to get somebody decent. So it seemed strange when I first read it of, man, he's only been there for three years. Like, what is going on here? Now they're going to do a national search again, but he is moving into uh, a new role as vice president for strategic initiatives under Michigan State President Samuel Stanley, according to the university. They said a search firm has been retained to find a new AD. Uh, school said more details on the search process will be announced soon. But if I'm if I'm a football coach, and my first year was the COVID season, and I moved over after one year at Colorado, I would not feel great about this. You know, you, the guy that hired you is is still going to be there, but he's taking a three hundred seventy five thousand dollar pay cut to move into this new thing. I think that there are so many guys. Think about all the ADs that have retired, resigned, all the people that were involved in college athletics that just, after the COVID season, they said, screw it. I would rather take a pay cut than have to deal with this crap again. Do you, th- do you feel like that's what's happening? No. Well, so I don't think this guy wanted the job to begin with. I think, I think he was trusted with it. I yeah. think he was given the job, and he loves Michigan State, and so he chose to do it. And then this is all speculation on my part. I don't know him. I don't have any inside information. I don't know any of that. I'm, just, he, I'm just telling you what, what I think. He had no experience in athletic administration before. He was uh, appointed I th- I think he was a in trusted, 2018. Yeah, I think he was a trusted administrator at Michigan State, and I think he loved Michigan State and wanted the best for them. And so he chose to take on a, a bad job, which was the athletic director that had to deal with the Izzo and the Antonio and the Larry Nasser crap. Okay. Yeah. And he and he did all of that. And he and he was a good soldier. And I think now he's sitting here looking at this and he's dealing with all the bullshit that an athletic director has to deal with. And he says, I don't want this job. I didn't want it to begin with. We were supposed to have a national search and hire somebody else, but nobody wanted the job because of all the chaos that was going on when I took over. So I got stuck with it. Well, now things have settled. Larry Nasser's situation, you know, that guy's locked away for the rest of his natural born life. You know, D'Antonio is retired. We have a head coach that is stable and has a has a good contract. And and let's it's time to find the guy that's supposed to sit in this chair. Because I don't want to sit in this damn chair. I, that's I what really I think, think is happening. Yeah. That's that's what I really believe is happening. They they took somebody who was trusted, which I'll tell you this. If this is the case, this this really was the best guy for the job. The the person who doesn't want the power is the person you want, by the way. Like that's yeah. that's who that's who gets it because he's going to really do the right thing for the for the school just because that's it's the right thing to do. Yeah. I and I tend to agree. Now, I tend to agree. I I I don't know that if I'm Mel Tucker, I'm worried at all. I think I took that job because a he got the contract he got. Not because he's Mel Tucker, but because he he and his agent understood nobody else wants this damn job. Yeah. And it's a hard, hard job. And so I think that contract is strong. If they fire him, they're going to owe him a lot of money. And I don't think he's worried about it because this is one of those situations where who the hell are you going to hire? Because I don't yeah. think anybody else wants to come in and take this job over. I just started rebuilding it. And then also, this is a school that, Hasn't had turnover in a long time. D'Antonio had this job since Nick Saban. Okay, yeah. And and eighty percent of the people alive watching college football don't even know that Nick Saban ever coached there. That's that's true. So, that's true. So I, I'm just telling you that they this is not a place that 
I don't think if you're Mel Tucker, you're not worried that the new guy coming in is just going to can you for someone else. I also think that the new guy coming in, who whoever this individual is, man or woman is, I, I, I don't know who wants this job. I think it's going to be a hard job because yes. at some point in time, you're going to deal with the end of Izzo as well. Yes, and then you have to make that hire. I mean, it's just it, it could it's be not a disaster. Gonna, it's, this is not an easy athletic director job by any stretch of the imagination. No, you're right. You so, are very right. I think it's going to be a tough hire, but I, th- I I think the reason the turnover is there is because this guy finally says, "Okay, Nasser's locked away." You know, let's. Get, let's could you imagine that? Think about that. You you get hired to a job that you have no experience in. You're there for three years, and in that three years. Your football coach that's been there forever retires. You deal with a COVID season. Hang on, you has deal to with deal the with violations. Stuff. Yeah, has to deal with a lot of like, like in trouble kind of violations, and then decides to retire last minute on you. Yeah, I had to hire a new coach. This yeah, you got to hire him in like February, like in in the middle of in the middle of us kind of getting in trouble yes. for him. Yes, uh, it's just ridiculous. And then Larry Nasser, and then some of the Izzo problems that that came up, which I don't think Izzo was involved, but it, Izzo hired somebody who was a bad like. Yeah, it just became a whole thing. Yeah, that yeah. was a that was a really hard job. That's one of those situations where it really does take someone who's not necessarily the best person for the job, but somebody who loves the school and says, "I'm going to do this shit job for as long as I can do it." Yeah, because I'm going to. And his, your only job is don't embarrass the school any more than you already are. That's those those three seasons. Likely took a, a good chunk years of years off, off his, his life. life. Yeah, yeah. Oh no. Yeah. I'm going to take a three hundred thousand dollar pay cut. Absolutely. And I, now I'm going to go spend the next three me- weeks on the beach. Yes. Right? See ya. Everybody else is going back to school, and I'm going to go find a, a water and hole somewhere. That's what I'd be doing. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.